Hi, I'm Mark McDonald, and today we're going to take you on a tour of five practical uses of the Gemini API that you can use as a developer or product owner in your own apps. Let's dive straight in. First up, let's see how we can load images and other media directly into structured data stores. As developers, we all have to manage data in our apps somewhere, usually in some kind of database. And pretty often, we use object relational mapping libraries as they make it easy to map between physical database records and logical data models. Using the Gemini API, we can take this further and map between our models and the real world using photos, audio, and video. Let's look at an example. A membership form like this is pretty typical of something that a small local club or business might use to sign up new members. These paper forms are still in use in a lot of places and aren't really made for machines to easily ingest as they're written for and by humans. Us humans can be messy and variable. For example, people can write something like age using different units, years and months, or even decimals. But this is where the Gemini API can help. We're going to take a photo of this membership form and load it into a database. Firstly, we'll define our physical database schema using SQL Alchemy. In this example, the form is stored across two tables, one for the members and one for their interests. If you're working with a database that already exists, you shouldn't need to make any changes to load data through the Gemini API. The magic comes from how the model can map to your existing schema. Next, we define a logical model for our data using Pydantic. If you're building user interfaces or passing data between systems, you likely already have logical models defined too. Here, the two tables are represented by nested classes, and the possible interests are captured both as Pydantic objects and as a Python enumeration. Now, I can load a photo of the membership form using a common Python library like Pillow. With the photo and schema both loaded, we can now make a request to the Gemini API that includes the member class as the response schema, as well as the photo. By setting the response MIME type and schema, we're indicating to the model that the response must comply with that provided schema. Under the hood, this is all JSON, but the Python SDK understands Pydantic objects and does the conversion for us automatically. Here, I've also included a system instruction with the current date. This ensures that the model could convert between the date of birth on the form and the age column in the database. We don't need to provide a specific direction to get the model to do the conversion between date of birth and age, but you could set up more complex conversions if you needed. Once the request is complete, we get an instantiated object in response.parsed. In this case, it's a member object, and you can see that the fields are populated correctly, and that even the interests that were checkboxes on the form map back to enum objects. Now that we have a structured instance of our photo, we can insert it into our database or present it in a UI for a human to check. And remember that the Gemini API supports more than just images. You can follow this process with video, audio, screenshots, PDFs, unstructured text, and more. This example gives Python heavily, but under the hood, everything is JSON, so it's portable to your language of choice. Next up is a look at how to connect your app's API to the Gemini Live API to control it with live audio. To show how this works, we have a list editor app here that could be operated hands-free. It has the functions you would expect, add item, edit item, complete item, etc. Let's see it in action. Hey, I'm making lasagna tonight. Can you make me an ingredients list? So the agent called a function called create list, which updated the UI. I've got onions and garlic already. Can you check them off for me? This time the model called two functions, one to look up the most up-to-date list and then another to make an edit to it. Let's try a few more things. I'm also making garlic bread. Can you make me another list? Okay, looking at the previous list, can you check off any items I've already got? So you can see how adding a voice interface to your app opens up a whole new mode of interacting for your users. With the Gemini Live API, you can set up two-way streaming using text or audio. With audio streaming, 
your user speaks and the Gemini API responds in real time, invoking any tools or APIs you have configured. The setup works like this. First, set the output mode, for example, audio or text. Then start a session using the connect function. Send any text, audio, video to the model and wait for a response. If you can, stream the audio back to the user so they hear it live. Otherwise, buffer the response and play back the WAV file. Repeat this for as long as your session lasts. To wire up your custom API or tools, you provide a schema that represents the interface, the function name, description, and arguments. Typically, you can get these directly from the function itself, which is exactly what the SDK does. But you can also specify it if you need to be more expressive. Then, during the live conversation, if your user makes a request that is best handled by a tool, the model will generate and return the structured arguments to your client, which makes the request, the response is sent back, and the chat continues on. This back and forth process is what powers the example you saw before, where a user can talk to your app and use their own voice to perform complex tasks. The live API is available through the Python and TypeScript SDKs, but if you don't use either of these, the underlying streaming API runs on WebSockets. You can call it from any language. You just need to be able to connect to a secure WebSocket endpoint and pass the audio or video streams along with any tools or instructions you need for your app. We even have an example using the Bash shell in the cookbook. Check it out. Now let's take a look at how we can use a browser as a tool with the Gemini API. You may be familiar with systems like RAG that can be used to connect data sources to LLMs. This allows you to bring in data that is newer than the model's data cutoff, or to provide data that is factual and possibly relevant to a user's query. Well, the internet is already a massive data source that can be accessed via a web browser. You may even have your own data or tools accessible through your corporate intranet or private home network. For these cases, you can connect a web browser to the Gemini API as a tool. This gives your users a way to ask questions about live internet or intranet data and even control simple web-based systems. A simple but effective web browser tool is one that just makes a HTTP request and returns the contents. Here, I've defined a load page function that uses the Python request library to make a HTTP request to the specified URL. LLMs understand Markdown, so it also takes the full HTML of the page and converts it to Markdown for the model to use. Using Markdown still preserves the general HTML semantics, things like heading levels that indicate important page sections, as well as links and lists, but it uses fewer tokens than a full HTML page, so the process is more efficient. A lot of the information that is important for rendering a good looking web page just isn't needed by an LLM in order to read the main text. So using Markdown is a neat way to tidy up a model. Here, I've connected the tool to the live API to show it running in real time. With a live session running, we ask a timely question that requires internet access. The model generates a relevant URL, calls the load page function that makes the request. Then the model processes the Markdown and answers the question. Since the tool is run by our app, anything that the app can connect to can be provided to the model. To see how it works for our local network, I've made up a synthetic intranet service and we're going to plug it into the Gemini API. Here's the front page. This time, we're using a chat session over the regular HTTP API. The setup is similar. We provide the function as a tool, create a chat, and send a question. In the system instruction, we also provide extra context the model needs, like the address of the homepage. Remember that the load page function just takes a URL, so the system needs to know where to start. With all of that set up, you can now answer questions about the internet, like which HR forms are available. And you can see from the web server logs here that the model has made a number of requests. It started off at the root of the internet and found the HR page by navigating the site on its own, finding and following links just from the page source. And because this is a web request, the data is live. If someone updates the intranet, the model will automatically use the latest information. There's no need to re-index a database or regenerate embeddings. Now, plain text and markdown go a long way, but the web is much richer than that. We have pictures and JavaScript and much more. You can take advantage of the Gemini API's multimodal capabilities by instrumenting a real browser like Chrome and sending screenshots back alongside the textual page contents. And by using a real browser, you can navigate sites that use JavaScript too. Like before, this tool loads the page and returns the markdown, but it also includes a screenshot of the page so that the model has enough information to navigate visually and understand any non-textual elements on the page. As you can see, the tool code is incredibly short. This example only loads a URL and takes a snapshot of the page, but you can build whatever support you need, keyboard inputs, scrolling, form submission, and more. 
In this next example, we're going to get the Gemini API to generate charts for us. If you haven't already seen it in action, Gemini models can generate and run Python code within a sandbox environment to help answer a request. This sandbox includes libraries like matplotlib and seaborn that you can use to generate plots from the data you provide in the model's context window. When you provide a Gemini model with tools that can connect to a database, say to list tables or execute SQL, the model is able to query your database and use that data to answer questions. This gives you the ability to ask open-ended questions about the contents of your database and get back answers that are grounded in your data. Now, being able to have a conversation with your database is already a superpower, but you can take it to the next level by adding code execution to generate visualizations. In addition to using a database, you can directly add any files that the Gemini API supports. Here, I've run the same process in AI Studio using a CSV file. First, the model generates code for the data analysis. Then it generates more code to draw the chart and returns you the chart image. It also explains its actions along the way with some plain text that you can show your users. If you want to extend your app to use more advanced charts or custom visualization tools like Google Maps, the Gemini API can generate the visualizations if you provide it with the tool or schema. This works great for rich visualization tools like Altair Charts or D3. Here's a quick example using natural language to generate a data-driven map. With the live API set up to use code execution, our static maps tool, and Google Search, we first ask the model to plot capital cities on the map. When that completes, we can ask it to show some data. You can, of course, provide your own data, but here I have asked it to color the markers based on the average temperature that it looks up with Google Search. As you can see, with a small amount of setup, you can build apps to create interactive data visualizations that connect your users with your data. For the last example, we'll set up a question and answer system to unlock your unstructured multimodal data. For businesses that have been around for a while, it's common to have valuable information locked up in PDFs or scanned document images. Maybe you even have manuals from an old appliance or find yourself in a foreign country needing to operate a washing machine. Whatever the situation, you can turn these unstructured documents into a Q&A system with just a few lines of code. In this prototype made in AI Studio, the user has provided a product manual as a PDF, plus a photo they took themselves and a prompt asking how to use it. As a developer, you can package up your PDFs into an app and your users can learn to use the product however they learn best, whether that is troubleshooting by taking photos or just asking questions directly. To do this, we'll be using the fact that the Gemini API can process PDF files directly, along with a number of other file types. To do this, you upload the files through the Gemini file API, then just start sending your questions. For PDF files, the model will process both text and images from the document and can support long documents up to 3,600 pages. Images work in the same way. You can either upload and then ask, or if the image isn't too big, you can just include it directly in the request, like in this example. Plus, you can combine media, like using images together with video to ask questions like, what does this button do? If you're reusing these documents across many requests or many users, you are potentially regenerating and recalculating the same tokens in each of these requests. This can be really inefficient and in some cases, expensive. To help with this, the Gemini API has a caching feature that allows you to reuse files, tools, and instructions at the start of the model's input. This takes a snapshot of the model weights after processing the docs so that you don't get charged for reprocessing every document on every request. To find out more about the caching and pricing models, check out the caching guide in the docs. To get started with these features, check out all of the code for this and everything else here in our cookbook and in the Gemini API docs. Thanks for watching. We touched on a lot of features here, so if you want to dive into these examples and check out the code yourself, you can find links to all of the code in the description below.